Hi everyone, Alvis Syke here. Uh, I have a video today for informational purposes only. Uh, it's a real quick uh, summary on a book called Anger Management. Uh, this is by Peter Favaro from 2006. Um, <clears throat> and again, uh, just doing a real quick mini summary, I'm just kind of picking out the gems. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the author mentions that anger is a normal uh, human emotion, uh, and the book focuses on what the author refers to as the angry lifestyle. So a person has an angry lifestyle when the normal, natural way they look at life is pessimistic, aggressive, critical, nasty, and confrontational. Okay. Um, the chronically angry person is angry almost all the time. It appears as though this is the emotion uh, that they feel most comfortable expressing. Okay. So the author speaks of an imaginary container that the chronically angry person never seems to be able to empty. So when frustrated, this container tends to start to fill up. And frustration, according to the author, doesn't seem to go away as quickly as it as it goes up. So there's this tendency to get a cumulative uh, effect. So one small frustration can be the straw that broke the camel's back or the final brick on the wall, you know, the boiling point, uh, etc. Now, mindset is real uh, important here. You know, some people see the world as hostile and consequently, you know, they're always on alert and ready to fight, uh, even if there's no reason uh, for a fight. And there's a lot of authors and songwriters that address uh, this sense of ready to fight, even though it's imagined. Uh, for example, um, I went off to fight some battle uh, that I'd invented inside my head. And that's by Sting. I can't remember the, uh, the song, but that's, uh, that's the, uh, the lyric there. Now, the author uh, speaks of people that hold on to anger, maintaining presumptions, or he shortens it to AMP. Uh, for example, the world is full of morons. Most people I meet are out to screw me over. Uh, almost everyone on the road is a lousy driver. Sometimes I think that, but I, I uh, get back to a regular, uh, more logical way of thinking. Uh, you know, and it goes on and on. So he mentioned six critical paths that are presented as a way of dealing with anger. I'm just going to pick out um, three. You'll have to read the book to get, you know, the, um, the complete details. Um, but he mentions uh, increasing anger uh, awareness as one way of dealing with uh, anger. You know, what, what maintains my anger? How many AMP did I engage in today? Uh, then you challenge, you know, the AMP, you know, and you look for all or none, all or none uh, statements to, uh, to challenge, you know, like, well, almost everyone on the road is a lousy driver. Well, that's not really true. I mean, you just kind of notice the really lousy drivers. There's a lot of, you know, pretty decent drivers. And I should know I drive on Southern California freeways. Um, consequence forecasting. How the behavior we engage in today has consequences tomorrow. So what we're really doing here is we're stopping and we're thinking logically here. Um, and, you know, I mean, we're thinking about potential consequences. You know, we're not letting ourselves get uh, heated up and um, in some irrational sort of way. You know, the idea is to cool the limbic system and to think rationally and think of consequences, you know, if I were to let my anger get out of control. And then um, the last one I go with uh, that I'm presenting, de-escalation. So if you can remove toxic elements from your life, you know, avoid people that are uh, chronically angry, you know, the better for you. Uh, sometimes we can't do that. Um, now, I worked as a school psychologist and I was on one of the crisis uh, prevention training teams, you know, teaching staff to de-escalate uh, situations. Um, you know, that was like the main thing as opposed to having to restrain a student if uh, something was going on with him. 
And, you know, you really need to be in the right mindset because sometimes, you know, we would have students that would uh, just kind of, you know, lose it. Uh, they'd be throwing stuff, knocking over computers. We'd have to, you know, move the, the class out of the, uh, the other students out of the, uh, the classroom uh, just for, for safety reasons. And, you know, we're still trying to remain calm and diffuse the situation. And even though, you know, the student might be, you know, cussing at us or, or you know, maybe even, you know, taking a swipe at us or something uh, like that. Um, it, it helped, I think, to to kind of look at it. You know, if we knew the kids, we knew, you know, his background's pretty tough. I, I kind of understand where he's going from or coming from. It's not really a personal sort of attack. Um, he has some issues obviously with being able to deal with frustrating situations, whatever it took to stay in a particular mindset to be able to deal with the situation uh, rather than, uh, and then de-escalate the situation rather than adding fuel to the, to the fire. So important points from the book, uh, you wanna challenge AMP and all or none thinking or statements, uh, avoid chronic predatory angry people uh, if you can, Stop and think when in a stressful, potentially uh, anger-inducing situation, you know, and I, when I say think, I mean, you know, think with your prefrontal cortex, you know, not letting the, the limbic system, that emotional part of the brain take over. And then um, the author mentions work on quieting the body, you know, like through exercise, regular exercise, regular uh, breathing exercises, uh, proper nutrition, and then he even mentions, you know, developing uh, affirmations for tough times when you when you're in them, and again practicing these. So there it is. I hope it's uh, helpful, and that is it.